It's the most prolific series of video games about skateboarding. Or, it's the only real series of video games about skateboarding. It's the thing most of us know about skateboarding. It's Tony Hawk, Pro Skater, this week on Nothing Good. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Uh, it's good to be here. Everyone, shut up. We're going to welcome our guest back. It's the eponymous Drew. Drew, how you doing? Good. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad to finally be a part of, you know, the event that is Nothing Good Podcast. I'll be honest. There was, like, the last, like, several weeks, especially since the blunder that was in our personal lives, Jeff spoiling Spider-Man for me. Um I protested watching or listening to the show. Yeah, watching because I stare straight at my Spotify screen and just watch that logo for two hours straight and just listening to you guys laugh nonstop. Let me just tell you how awesome it is. But I protested listening to the nonstop laughter uh, for all of about, I don't know, two weeks and then I had to get back into it because, you know, you go through withdrawal from the show. You absolutely do. I had the shakes. I had the tremors. I was... In near cardiac arrest from not listening to you guys banter and talk shit on me, may I add? Yeah, we we have that effect on are, people. Are you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, are, are you sure, sure that it's not from the extra shots of espresso that you've consumed? That you're feeling all those things. Oh my god! At this point, probably. But who cares? Dave, <laughs> listen, I, 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 Mac, I love you. You're an amazing person. But quit putting a fucking X in espresso, please. Thank it's not you. espresso. You fucking, <laughs> it's it's un fucking espresso. low brow, low listen, red motherfucker. I, you can not drink listen. coffee. You can knock it all you want. That's, <laughs> that's my whole fucking thing. You keep an X out of espresso. Yeah. How dare you? I, I, so I, get, I give so few fucks about coffee that I don't even give a shit about mispronouncing it. Like That's how. That's my <laughs> level of disrespect. That's like when you know somebody and you call them by the wrong name deliberately just because you want oh. them to know how fucking they are. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying about espresso. <laughs> you motherfucker wow um so no two things two things uh thing number one uh, i don't now the audience you guys obviously can't see what's happening here but i'm showing off my nothing good t-shirt that yeah. i just got in the mail Fancy. like three days ago uh it's the it's the masters of the universe logo which is sexy and i love it and it fits so well it's very comfortable it's can't go out on a, a, Night on the town with a sh shirt on. We go, hey, what's nothing good? I'm going to tell him nothing good is what it is. <laughs> um, oh, but man. yeah, we got our, a merch store now. Uh, and I'm, I'm really designed by our, our, our fantastic host here, Noah, Mr. Brown himself. Just a genius uh, artist that he is when it comes to this so thing. Actually, nice. uh, the other day, nice I got a Facebook message from a buddy of mine who's been a graphic designer for I don't know, 20 some months. You that that nothing good logo you guys have is ridiculous. I love it. I wanted to tell you that. It's dope. Well, thank you. It's awesome. Wonderful. Appreciate it. Nothing like a little retro feel. And yeah, you can get the, the classic nothing good logo, the one you probably are staring at right now. It's definitely if you're an Apple user and listeners on Apple Podcasts, it's the thing that stares you in the face instead of our funny cover art. But you can get the Masters of the Universe logo. We got our iconic GTA logo we have one that uh makes fun of hulk hogan because fuck hulk hogan is an official stance yeah. of this show ninja turtles and a lot more uh and you can go to our social media uh pages to check that out facebook or you can check us out on our official website at uh nothing good dot podbean dot com ask me if i'll link that to you i won't but you'll remember because if you fucking <laughs> want to earn the right to wear a t-shirt that we definitely didn't just put together then you can fucking earn it. Yeah, the, 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 listen, the listeners have to put in a lot of work, too. We can't do everything. We can't do yeah. all the heavy lifting. No. There, there is something, though, gentlemen, we can do. All right? And, and be, being that we're at the beginning of the year, I'm going to throw this out there, guys. All right? And this is because of a request from one of our dear listeners reached out to me and said, hey. It was me. It was not. It was not Drew. No. Uh, they said, hey, 
what's in Sloppy Jones? So, what if, gentlemen? Just in time, you know where this is going, Jones. Just in time for Christmas, the Nothing Good Podcast Cookbook. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, not, right, no, right now it just has I don't, it has I one this. meal and a bunch of drinks in it that's it I mean that could be it. <laughs> a bunch of that's drinks that's, that's, <laughs> can, can I can I do an entire section of the cookbook about using alternate renewable protein uh, in my severe meal uh, <laughs> I'll be filling <laughs> fill in the blanks there there's cooking with your friends and then there's cooking with your friends <laughs> okay. you know there will be an entire section of peruvian cuisine mm. for our succulent peruvian friends succulent, succulent peru is a t-shirt you can relive your favorite professional band by uh by supporting their world tour t-shirt yeah but it's all um, but speaking of world tour and world world renowned things what's everybody yes. uh enjoying as we talk about tony hawk pro skater today drew what you got um absolutely nothing actually you're going dry you <laughs> dry I, dog I finished, I finished yeah. the espresso so espresso uh and you know i just wanted to let you know that i am completely caffeinated and ready to go this before everybody announces their thing, quick tidbit of information I've discovered or remembered since our last recording of a podcast is that Groundhog Day, the movie, has owned its own earned its own Oxford definition in the dictionary. By the way, so like Groundhog's oh. Day isn't just a holiday in the in the in the in the dictionary. It's also like a verb for a Groundhog Day of events. Like it's I just looked it up today. It's, it's there by Oxford. Good job. Oh, interesting enough that because interest. of that movie. I did not know. Well, that's good to know. We won't mention that movie anymore, though, because we don't want to fucking trigger <laughs> Jeff again. Oh, to sort of <laughs> irrational. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just getting over my PTSD from that. So <laughs> yeah, shut your fucking mouth, full. Drew. I still don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, he went full. He went full yeah, fucking I Karen. Really get it. I went. Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. It, it made no sense. Yeah, we don't know. We all kind of agree to not talk about it ever again. Yeah, my apologies. I'm done. Let's all bury it down. Real deep down inside and never let it out again. Ever. How how deep? Real deep. At least at oh, least man. three oh, knuckles man. deep. Oh, you had oh, one man. fucking job, Noah. One <laughs> fucking job and you butchered it. You piece of fucking shit. <laughs> you I will never apologize for espresso again. <laughs> you filthy piece of shit. Oh god damn it. <laughs> so before we get to the topic at hand, and I know we're talking about booze here, uh, I'm just drinking water again because I'm a schmuck. Uh, we have had a, a slight change uh, the last couple of weeks. We've had people, you know, making requests lately uh, for show topics, and I really wanted to kind of get to, yeah. to put it out there that if anybody is interested in like a particular topic, whether it's gaming, music, uh, a wrestling topic, uh, you know, mo- a movie of some sort, you know, don't hesitate. You know, message us on Facebook. Um, hit us. I have a, uh, a DM. Slide in our DMs and on Twitter or something like that. You could. We could absolutely facilitate you to slide in your DMs. I'm sorry, the listeners couldn't see me, but I was telling Drew to shut the fuck up while someone else. Yeah, was talking. yeah, no, my bad. Uh, and I don't interrupt somebody. What the fuck do you think this is? Could a heathen? You know, one say espresso <laughs> and one just fucking babbling over the great Doc Jones. <laughs> How about I'm gonna show a little respect? I'm gonna start fucking <laughs> muting people here on the show. Jeff has a fucking hissy fit. Dave throws <laughs> in at random consonants in the middle of fucking words, and Drew can't respect the basic laws of human conversation. Let's try this again. Doc, yeah. Oh, so they should they should DM us or or, or send snail mail. Yeah, slide our DMs if you have an idea, something that you feel like it, you know fits what we do and what we talk about. We'll mull it over. We'll absolutely put it on the list, and we'll give you a shout out too. We really appreciate. I mean, we have probably in ours probably like over a year's worth of topics, but there's always something extra that we maybe hadn't thought about. So feel free, you know, anybody who wants. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, for example, uh, we had someone reach out to us and suggest what is probably going to be our next wrestling show. And of all the topics we had on our list, that was not on there. So it was a good, interesting, refreshing call. Now, yeah. Drew, what did you have to add oh. to that conversation? <laughs> now, you know, I'm going to build it up. Everyone, everyone, wherever you are you're right. in, your, in your lives, if you're listening to us in the car, roll the window down and tell everyone in your life and in traffic to shut the fuck up because Drew's about to talk. <laughs> Drew, what awesome thing do you have to say today? I was going to say you guys should do a total recall episode. 
That's actually a good idea. I feel yeah. bad. For- <laughs> <laughs> the original. Not the fucking <laughs> shitty Colin Farrell fucking No. Reason. I've been drinking Mars beer on this show re- continually, making total recall jokes. Hoping one day we get there. That's a good idea. I, I have a theory that nobody can remake an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie because you can't follow Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. Well, let's wait for the 2032 yeah. remake of Jingle All the Way, starring <laughs> somebody. Who the fuck knows? Probably The Rock. Uh, probably. I was going to say, Rock is probably, Dwayne Johnson is probably the only person who could potentially follow Arnold. Potentially. We'll see. But Jafar, what are you drinking? Yeah, so it's mid-February, but I'm trying to crush through the remainder of my holiday beer. So I am drinking a Trogue's Mad Elf. I almost drank one. That's awesome. Now, I literally decided not to have one because I thought that's too too <laughs> spicy to go with today. Too I'm spicy. going with I like the rest of my spicy. porter, my stouts, Grand Cacao from Trogue's. And Mac, what are you having to round us out? Well, I still got some rum left over from when we recorded last time, so I'm continuing <laughs> my journey with my uh, rum and cherry Pepsi. But uh, I, I wanted to kind of real quick here, gentlemen, before we even dive into the topic, but kind of like, because something happened uh, since we've recorded the last couple of episodes, since we've kind of gotten together to talk. Uh, and this is the, uh, the Dave O'Mac uh, drive through moment of the show, as I'm, as I'm, as I'm coining here. Um, oh, man. We got it. Oh God! Don't don't make me do music for this. Oh, Keep hey, going. Hey, really, hey Drew, if you want to interrupt him at any point, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. Um, I'm kind of curious where this is going. We <laughs> we we got we were all given something here just the other week that we never probably thought we were going to get because it was said it would be the most expensive thing to ever make, and Peter Jackson himself said we couldn't make this into a movie. But goddamn, we're getting it on Paramount Plus in March. It is the Halo television show. We got our first look at it, gentlemen, and kind of tying everything back into video games and even kind of echoing back to a previous topic. Gentlemen, did you see the trailer? What did you think about it? All I'm fucking saying is they better nail the flood. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, whenever they bring the shit in, like, nail it. Make it fucking slimy, creepy, like... Like, that's all, I'm, in my mind, when I saw them in on set, I'm like, they better fucking nail the blood. And those little guys Wait, who run yeah. around, you know, there's like, those little guys who always run from you, the you know which eight. ones I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, the grunts. Yeah, yeah, the little, like, yeah. Grunts, yeah. Yeah, those fuckers. But there's like, the, yeah, the, those. The grunts. And the needler. The, grunts, yeah. the needler better be a sweet fucking weapon in the movie. Are you just yelling Halo terms out that you remember? <laughs> the needler. <laughs> the Arbiter. <laughs> all right. Fucking space. Who says double kill? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Is it Master Chief <laughs> yeah. that says it, or is it like a sergeant that's like, double kill? Killing child. What is what is happening? We are off the, the rail. Um, Clearly started. So uh, I did see the trailer, uh, and um, <clears throat> it looks cool, man. I know it's not supposed to be canon with the with the the games, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, it gives them you know license yeah. to be very creative. Uh, a lot of backlash uh, on the Twitter space with Cortana, uh, the way she looks in terms of like her complexion. Yeah. And you know, I think if she was, it would not translate well. I kind of dig the way, and yeah. I, and I like that it's the it's a voice actress, which is really awesome. Uh, yeah, so as soon I'm, as you I'm, heard the voice, you're like, all right. I was like, here we go. I'm in. Uh, uh, so yeah. I'm I'm hopeful that it's good. I mean, it. So it'll be awesome just in general really bad for me to be disappointed with it. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I am really looking forward to them eventually getting to the Halo planet. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the ring world. It, yeah, just like kind of seeing how they decide to do that. Yeah, I, I, I think it looks awesome. Visually, it looks awesome. Uh, we get to see actual components of it. While I was watching it, I was like, for some reason, we're so spoiled by Star Wars right now. Every time Master Chief talks, all I can think about is the Mandalorian. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, this better be different than That's the Mandalorian. So, but it it, well, it looks dope. So I'm excited about it. And 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 spoilers for the Mandalorian for anybody who hasn't watched episode five of that show. But they fucking just took the fucking ring world and just dropped that yeah. in Star Wars. Yeah, they did. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think so. uh, I I think Halo looks cool. 
I, what I'm really excited about is for them, I want them to have a clean slate. We all know what the flood is. We all know who all the key characters are. And I, I always love the the covenants, home, the floating home world, and like the prophet of truth and reconciliation and those characters. But take your time. Get there. But what I was amazed about, like, I watched it twice just for this, the I way it looks. looks. Like how it looks like a video game cutscene. You know what I mean? Like this the lighting and depth mm-hmm. of field in every shot in that trailer, even the action shots, just looks awesome. So you can tell someone this is a this is a love project for somebody. And even if it's terrible, it'll be a loving, terrible thing. As most as most video game franchises are. Like our podcast. Like our podcast. Exactly. exactly worst like comes that. to worst. <laughs> Paramount goes fucking bankrupt because of it, and Disney just buys that too. This is all gearing up to the inevitable Super Smash Brothers movie where Disney uses all the franchises they have. Darth Vader, <laughs> Pikachu, <laughs> Master Chief, fucking She-Ra, uh, Woody from Toy Story, and for some ungodly reason, the, the lamp from Disney Pixar all have to team up to stop Maleficent from fucking folding the universe in half or some stupid horseshit. But it would sell. It would be the it's the highest gross yeah. movie of all time. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> Luxo is, Luxo is the name of the lamp, by the way. Oh thank you. Of course no you would. Excellent. Ah. But we're not here to talk about lamp Mm-mm. or Luxo. No. Or any of the random shit that Drew is rambling about. <laughs> we're here to talk about Tony Hawk Pro Skater. It's all fucking Dave's fault. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> Tony Hawk, so argu- arguably one of the best skateboarding franchises in video game history because it's the only skateboarding franchise in video game history. <laughs> That's but, true. There, no, there's one other one. There's Skate. Yeah, Skate. And, and no skate. one talks Fuck about you. it for a yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, released no. in 1999, uh, over the course of nine years, there were nine Tony Hawk games. They progressively got worse. So today, gentlemen, we're talking about the OG Tony Hawk Pro Skater, numero uno for the PlayStation. Mm. Let me just say, Classic, dude, that um, it led me to buying the Xbox remastered versions of one and two. Uh, actually, yesterday I was talking to Noah, and I'm just like, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna fucking buy it. And then I got stuck playing the game and meticulously trying to hundred percent the levels, like once again. Of course, I created myself a skater right away. Um, you know, like you normally would do, and you give them full sleeve tattoos that you eventually cover with a hoodie, uh, give them long hair that you put a cap <laughs> over, uh, and then you usually are trying to like give them like, you know, the baggiest pants you can because like nothing looks cooler than fucking losing your pants while you're doing kickflips and shit. But this inspired like, pretty much my entire way of life. Maybe it's old now. I mean, even <laughs> this, this, this movie. CCS catalogs. I still buy DC shoes. Like, they are the most comfortable shoes that I will ever own. Still buy them. All the fucking So let's, let, if, if, I, if, I, if I may, Andrew. You may. Let's <laughs> a little bit and ask the question, pose the question. All right? Because we, the, the beauty of this show is that the, the group of us have a very uh, upbringings uh, in varied environments. So, when you were a kid, like, what was the first experience or introduction to skateboarding you Ooh. had? Did you have a skateboard? Any of you? Did you try skateboarding at any point? And why is the Drew, big question? When you were a kid, did your family actually let you inside the house, or did they just keep you hanging out of a tree in the backyard? <laughs> <laughs> you know, why are you in America? No. The audience, not. the audience needs. We're to just, know. we're just, we're just letting know. them. We're just letting them know yeah. about your varied upbringing. Bring you into the headspace. The only reason that I have any experience with PlayStation Tony Hawk is because I watched Noah play it through the living room window, and uh, you know that was the experience. And then I eventually s- borrowed permanently uh, my first skateboard uh, from somebody I never talked to before. But you know, it was. You know, that pre-t- actually, this game, in all honesty, uh, is the reason, was my introduction to skateboarding. Uh, it was because of this game that I even, like, took interest in the X Games. And, like, who's Tony Hawk? And then I watched it, and I was enthralled with it early on. I'm like, this is, like, intense. And then I got a CCS catalog that I got for free, right, every month. And then I decided to get my first skateboard. Uh, and then tried skateboarding and got really fucking hurt. And then decided to stop skateboarding. Uh, but it still inspired that entire 
like year and a half of my life. But yeah, this is my introduction to skateboarding. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, uh, Mr. Brown. How about yourself? Oh, me, the other Mr. Brown. Hey, so um, truth be told, when growing up in the nineties, there's a lot of people who you know, Bart Simpson, skateboard. Right. And a lot of pop culture figures who skateboarding, but never really appealed to me um, until Tony Hawk came out in the first couple of games. But even then, I didn't buy a skateboard. Um, it took until I was like a sophomore in high school, I think even a junior, specifically a junior in high school. And I found out that if I wore a, a long sleeve shirt underneath a t shirt and put a, a knit cap on, and carried around a skateboard and drank a Jones soda, the girls would want to talk to me more. Um, and so I did. And I've maybe I have an element deck that I have. I still have to this day. It's the one I, I got off of the CCS. I uh, did the custom thing on it and bought it to look cool and rolled on it and got fucked up. So I just carried it around with me. It still worked just as well picking up girls <laughs> as if I was any good at skateboarding, which I never was and never will be. Um, <laughs> but it... it you couldn't even you know it did get me some play at that point in my life, drinking shitty green apple Jones soda, um, listening to Incubus and Weezer and having and uh, and wearing a knit cap. It worked. So that's my skateboarding. It, I believe true skateboarders, i.e. Heath Ledger in the movie Lords of Do Dogtown, <laughs> would call me a poser. But uh, so I am. But it fucking worked. So I'm a victorious <laughs> poser. In that <laughs> regard, but no, never actually skateboarded more than falling down a bunch of times. But I carried it around a bunch and used it to pick up chicks. But uh, play, yeah. play this in every game until Tony Hawk Four. Mac, right. Mac. So I did have a skateboard. Uh, it was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles skateboard that I got when I was like in fifth grade. Had a Raphael on the on the bottom of the board. Uh, it was a terrible skateboard. It always kept. You're a I man am. of culture. Uh, it just and mm -hmm. it just kept like it kept dragging to like the left anytime you tried to like skate. So I didn't really <laughs> just like something else. Am I right? <laughs> oh, 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 for sure, for sure. The scar tissue alone makes look. I call it Quasimodo because of the yeah. hump, but just like um, that, it ends in disappointment. Just, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but no, my my stuff when I was growing up, um, I was a a very good rollerblader. Um, obviously from my experience playing hockey. So I could do some shit on, on a pair of rollerblades pretty well. Um, I also dabbled a little bit with the BMX, uh, with the dirt tracks and being able to kind of do some stuff on that. But it never was something that kind of took off. Um, I was very fortunate growing up that uh, the group of friends that I had, we had a, a very diverse um, like group of people that liked different things. So you know, in summertime, you would have somebody's dad who would just pack up everybody and take them to the BMX track. And we would spend like entire nights just doing the track. And, you know, other friends who, you know, got really into playing tennis and we'd go up to the park and fucking have tennis tournaments. So, you know, you know, we're really fortunate to have a, a very diverse set of experiences. I could try a lot of stuff, but I never really got into it. And uh, I'm going to confess here, guys, uh, I was not a Tony Hawk fan uh, of the franchise growing up. So as we came to the conclusion to discuss the game, gentlemen, I'm a noob when it comes mm -hmm. to Tony Hawk. And uh, mm -hmm. I feel I feel bad for what I did to him uh, <laughs> playing playing the game because oh. I fucked him up. Poor guy. I yeah. fucked, oh, he just I think there was one point, even just when I was going through the tutorials, that he just laid there longer than I thought he should have. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, oh, fuck, come on. Like, this isn't that hard. Uh, you spell like, skate S-K-A-T. -E. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely asking for it to just to end the misery. Just save it and give me 10 minutes, please. But um, yeah, so you know, my my experience really playing this game was because uh, I just I never got into that, and and it wasn't ever just I just never got into it. It was never caught my attention because I always played so much like the EA sports games, baseball, football, hockey, and everything that that yeah. was just one of those that I get into. So this was this was fun for me because it's a brand new game. Drew, like yourself, I went out to the marketplace and I downloaded uh, the remastered one and two. It looks great. 
by the way. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yes. it's built it on really Unreal Engine, hard. and it's it looks mm, so damn good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, and I've uh, definitely I've definitely enjoyed it. So, so uh, uh, Jeff. Yeah. So I'm a few years older than most of you guys. This game came out in '99, which is when I was in college. Uh, but I started skating when I was a wee lad, a young teenager. <laughs> I was a skater boy, said, see you later, boy. Oh, my oh, God. <laughs> Were you? Uh... <laughs> uh, no, but like I got the CCS catalogs and I ordered a couple custom boards off there. A bunch of my friends were into skateboarding at the time. So I, I skated for a number of years. I was OK. I try it today and it's just embarrassing. I bust my ass all the time. I tried to. uh I thought because I could skateboard that I could snowboard. Did not. End no, up. not got, the same thing. <laughs> I got fucked up pretty bad snowboarding. Um, but but yeah, so I was I was big into skating for a number of years. I was super excited when this game came out. You know, at that time, skateboarding wasn't like it was just barely tapping into like a cultural thing where people were actually following because, it. Yeah. Um, and you know, Activision was trying to play off of the success that Nintendo had with 1080 snowboarding. Um, they wanted to develop a skate game, but they wanted to have somebody with a name attached to it. So they reached out to Tony Hawk, whose star was rising, endorse it, and got uh, to, and the rest is history, as they say. Um, any of you guys actually land any awesome. tricks yeah, skateboarding? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you mean, like, actually skateboarding? Yes, or falling down. <laughs> Like actually skateboarding, like in real life. Did you actually well, ever yes. land anything? I, I, I'm curious. I will tell you that uh, I uh, much not sort of like Mac. I the reason I was really, I wasn't really into skateboarding. The reason I even had a skateboard, and I got my skateboard very young, like you know, third grade, eighth, second grade, uh, really, really young, is the Ninja Turtles. You know, they skateboarded. I want to skateboard. My, there was a way my dad was going to go out and buy me a brand new skateboard. But what he did do was he went down to the red, white, and blue on Jet Avenue in Wilkinsburg, found a secondhand skateboard for probably $11, brought it home, and I was like the happiest little kid, and I was fucking terrible. I never got any better. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried so hard to get good at skateboarding because it just looked like so much fun in the Ninja Turtles cartoon and in the movies. And um, the best I could ever do, as I, I kept that skateboard, you know, forever. Like it's placed at my parents' house. Uh, the best I could do was go ten feet without falling. That's the best <laughs> I was ever able to pull off. That's, That's a good start, right man. There. That's a good start. It is. I, 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 the, I, the board, I, and here, here's how old and the board even wouldn't. It was like like it was like a beginner skateboard. It was like plastic that fit hard. Plastic. It was like a, like a, like not neon blue, but like a like a darker navy blue with right. bright yellow wheels. It was like terrible. a school chair, but it was like my the chairs you sat on in yeah. school, kind of a thickness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was yeah. my fucking skateboard, goddamn it. Yeah, I have a, a fun skateboarding story as an adult. So four of the five of us uh, on this podcast worked together at Toys R Us mm-hmm. at, at various <laughs> points in our lives. Uh, well, a mutual friend, Mikey V, also was a big skateboarder uh as a teenager and a young adult so there was one day one fateful day and i could talk about this now because toys r us is out of business but it was really slow on a sunday morning and we call this day sunday bloody sunday so we go to the back we get skateboards we bring them up to the r zone we're skateboarding around the r zone (laughs) behind behind the register we have a booth open we skate into the booth and start grinding on all the shelves. <laughs> oh, man. Grinding, for those unaware at home, is when you jump off the ground on your skateboard and land the front of the board on the shelf or a rail at a skate park and just grind all the way across. So we were doing that, and then we smashed a bunch of shit that belonged to Greasy Steve. Uh, so Sunday, <laughs> bloody Sunday. Ask my TV about it. It was good times. I, I, <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. I remember a time uh, with that same group of individuals that Jeff is referencing uh, himself and Mike V, where we were over at Mike's house breaking in his basement bar, and we got so drunk that super at one, drunk and so started drunk, skateboarding at like idea. two o'clock in the morning. Jeff and Mike go outside and grab like a skateboard, and they just start trying doing shit, which was just fucking magic. 
<laughs> it was not, I don't really remember it, but I, I hear that it did not end well. <laughs> it did not end it did not end well for anybody, but it was really fucking it was really funny just watching you guys trying to do shit at like your worst coordinated time. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 And I then one passed. person passed one person passed out in a pile of laundry in, in Mike's basement, so we yeah, couldn't find couldn't, we hmm. couldn't find Jeff that night. Couldn't find him. My uh, my my skateboarding story is I was 16 and I had already fallen off the skateboard enough to realize I was not meant to ride it as a person. <laughs> um, but I was carrying it around as a prop while I, I hung out and we were walking through this neighborhood of me and a friend of mine. And there was these girls that we go to high school with and they drive up in their car and they're like, come hang out our house. So you can show me your skateboard moves. And I was like, oh, no. So, so I did, and I, like, I went to the driveway, and I intentionally, this is, it's, I can't believe this worked. I can't believe this fucking worked. Just, the driveway goes off, and it was like a sewer grate, kind of a, like a thing off to the side. And I went, it looked like, and I got on like real low so I could keep my balance. It's the only thing I could do. And I turned back like, huh? And went right for it, right? And it wiped out, and I did like the shitty, terrible roll, like on purpose, right? Off of the skateboard onto the sidewalk, mm. and like grabbed my knee. Like I heard it, right? And was limping. And then like Peter Griffin. Just here's the thing. They're like, Oh my god, are you okay? And I was like limping. And I was like, No, fine, I'm fine. But obviously limp like the worst fucking fake limp. I'm like, Yeah, no, cool, I'm cool, it's cool. Let's let's hang out. Let's hang it out. Let's check it out. Nickelback's a thing right now, right? Let's look at let's listen to Nickelback. Um <laughs> And I ended up making out with the girl that was driving on her back porch because she felt so bad for me. She iced up my leg. It didn't hurt at all. And, I hope she's and we made out on her back this. porch. That is awesome. That is inside. While her dad's. I hope she's listening to this so she knows that you do shit out of her. Oh, no, she probably do. You know, most of the women in my life find out what kind of person I am real fast. It's the really <laughs> fucked up ones that stay. <laughs> 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 and I uh, uh, happy anniversary. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so like I once half landed like a kickflip. Like I almost nailed it. That was like as far as I got. I mostly use my skateboard for street luging down the hills of Dormont. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good luge. Oh dude, I get so fucked up. I can't tell you how many times I almost literally died from like somebody going through a stop sign and I'm like going down Texas Avenue, <laughs> like fucking full gun in it. And if I stop, I'm really getting messed up. And at the bottom of the hill, I usually use, there was like just all cobblestone. So I'm, I'm like bound for do <laughs> honestly surprised I'm here. And that was early in my life. <laughs> like probably like 13. Oh, so when's the first so, time everyone played this game besides Mac? Did we all play it in 99 except Mac or Jones? When did you discover? Yeah. Discover Tony Hawk. Uh, I'm pretty confident that I didn't play it in '99. I didn't. I didn't have a station. Um, in 2001. Uh, it was a whole other conversation for the time how I got a PlayStation. But um, I ended up getting Tony Hawk. I want to say super secondhand. Like somebody didn't want it anymore because it was old. Uh, and so I got it that way, and I was instantly hooked on just the. How intuitive the controls were and everything, but um, yeah, definitely it was like two thousand one ish. wasn't wasn't uh, right away. Well, I understood, I understood. Now I know uh, Drew and I. First of all, it, it it has been brought to my attention since our doomed Groundhog Day episode, which was Drew's first appearance on this podcast, and I didn't mention that this is the fabled Drew uh, that is my brother. That, uh, that we <laughs> mention frequently throughout the course of the show. So when uh, Drew and I have very similar origin stories. For yeah, we haven't said that. No, once. no, we're like, brothers. We're the this is, That's this true. Is, this is my brother. Um, we had it for the PlayStation. Uh, but I do believe, yes. I don't know if we got it in 99 or we got it in 2000. Because I, as I remember the game, it was a PlayStation Greatest Hits game. With a green on the side, if I remember the logo. So I think we were late. I don't party. remember. I don't remember us necessarily having it, but I remember all of my friends having. It. You know, like whoever I would hang out with, they had it for their PlayStation until I eventually got it. But I had played it so many times, like sleeping over a friend's house and almost beating the game in like a night. But you know, the one thing that I always remember standing out about this game um, was the replay value in it. That was just there from the gate mm. and how they designed the game that even I noticed like, cause Dave, since you haven't played this game, like ever, you were a noob coming in. Um, the remastered controls 
are no different yep. than the original exactly. controls. Are no different at all. So, like, it's really, like, cool how I can still play the game and don't, don't miss a step because it's just... That's your yeah. Yeah, and, but, like, you're not designed to do things in the third level until you've already gotten through six levels so you could level up your guy enough to go back and replay that stuff and 100% and get the gold medals. And it was like the, right. the replay value was there. And it was one of the first games I remember having that, like, and continuously saving your progress. Like, it was the big time for video games at the time, anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the game was, and, and uh, fantastic design. The levels are multi layer to where you start out and the game's cool. And, you, and, you know, so many of that downhill kind of a presentation on the levels as you get going in one player, then you realize, oh, what's that over there? And until you learn to play the game well enough, to be able to ollie up onto a pipe, grind all the way to catch that thing, to get to that second area that you could do a thousand times until you get there, that the, it, it's, it really opens up the game, and it was well thought out that players, if they like it, are eventually going to get good enough. So we got to give them some extra shit to do. And it's a whole thing. Yep. Another thing is that was big about this game, and sorry to cut anybody off, but like, at this point in video gaming, if I remember correctly, it was just starting to be a thing where you would play a game and it wouldn't necessarily be the same experience every time. Tony Hawk, it was mm -hmm. a completely different experience every time you picked up the sticks. Whether you were doing a grind into a manual combo, into a saw, onto a ollie, you know, whatever you were doing, you never did it the same way twice. So, you know, it was a big thing in gaming at the time to have that happen. Like, you could play the same football game over and over again. It was getting you wins, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, with Tony Hawk, it was just, it was not built that way. Yeah, and it was so different than everything else that was out at the time. I mean, yeah. especially as someone who came up as a skateboarder, like, there was some shitty skateboarding name that came before it where it was all, like, downhill racing, and it was just not great. Um, but this was more, it felt more open world. It felt more like you can do whatever you want. And it was one of those things that it wasn't like you could just pick it up and play mm -mm. From, on the first day because the controls are fucking difficult. Yeah. Like throughout there and throughout mm -hmm. the entire series, through all nine games, like it's a fucking hard, hard game to get a grasp on to, to figure out how the combo system works and figure out all the tricks because it seems like you're button mashing half the time. Um, but going back, I mean, how did it feel playing it, aside from Dave, who just played it for the first time, like 20 years later, what was that like taking the training wheels off and going back and playing it all these years later? It was super fucking yeah. frustrating at first. Uh, I, I, right? I like, spent so much time in Tony Hawk 1 and 2, especially, that I'm like, I, I was very confident that I'd be like, perfect. I knew. I'd be like, it'll yeah. take me like... 10 minutes, I'll get it. Uh, actually, my wife was sitting watching me play. Too. Shout out to Sally, my wife. Uh, everybody here knows she's a gamer. But there is one franchise when she was a kid that she loved above, above all else. It was Tony Hawk. Mm -hmm. And she she gamed the shit out of Tony Hawk when she was coming up. So it was, we actually took turns playing, which was the first time we gamed really ever. And That's awesome. The entire That's It was really cool. Awesome. Uh, but, um, but the... the the beauty of the game is, like, as you, as you said, if you're butt mashing, you're, you're fucking up, you're like, why? I remember this being so much easier, but something just starts to kind of, because the controls are yeah. very intuitive yeah. after a while. Yeah. You start getting, like, the vibe down the rhythm, timing. how to grind and switch to moves I don't know how to say, I don't even know. But then you start combos, and you're like, and then that the, the, the gameplay loop hits because you run out of time. You almost got all the secret tapes, or you almost got all the the letters. You almost got all. You almost did all the grinding on the lunch tables, or whatever it is. You go. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. I can do. It. I can do it this time. God damn it! I can do yeah. it this time. Oh, yeah. And you will not stop. <laughs> you just keep going. Yeah, it's awesome. Still, you get you know the pro score, or whatever it is that the, the white well you're looking for. So let's not forget. It was difficult at first, but let's not forget. Sorry to cut you off. Let's not forget that the first that PlayStation controllers didn't have fucking joystick. No. Yeah, it was uh, just a deep. Yeah. That's right. How primitive. Because I am. Um, I uh so so I I didn't buy the remaster to do a review today. I uh, have modded my PlayStation Classic to include a very large portion. Doc has played it. 
a very large portion of the original PlayStation's library on there, which includes Tony Hawk 1. And so I sat down with that, and you better believe that I kept going until I, because the that fucking soundtrack, which we'll talk about in a minute, just kicks so much ass on that game. It's so good. But, uh, but yeah, the, it just, but I'm, I'm a gamer in 2022. My thumbs are now used to the circular motion of a joypad, mm-hmm. and having only the D pad was difficult, man. Not all your uh, ridiculous. It's not all your thumbs are used to a circular motion. Mm-hmm. You oh. Spit on the first though, which I don't want to get my controller yeah. moist. So, <laughs> Dave, Dave, what was your first experience like well, when you popped your Tony Hawk cherry? It was like I said. I I, I yes, feel sir, real right? bad for for Tony. Um, because I, I just put him through a lot. I mean, he <laughs> probably several trips to the hospital, a lot of broken things, uh, a lot of exacerbation out of him. Um, kind of like the same feeling I get when I look at Drew. So a lot of things that you guys got to understand, because you know our listeners can't see this, you wouldn't really know that Drew and Noah were others, because half of Drew's face like sags. Like If you ever remember that episode from Batman, the animated series, where Clayface like can't hold it together anymore. <laughs> it's all right. That is the left side that's, of Drew's face. It's like it's really, it's really, it's really all the concussions that Noah gave me. That's that's worse than spoiling <laughs> Spider Man. Yeah, sorry. I'm saying. <laughs> so it's, it's not it's not droopy ass face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, oh, out of nowhere, fucking jab. <laughs> That's a right cross. Like, oh, I want to talk about this. It makes me kind of think for a minute that maybe Dave didn't play the game again. <laughs> right? Because he's just like, what shit? They're asking me real questions about the game. Shit, Drew. Drew, listen, you look like you're in an accident. Listen, it's, it's, one, of those, it's one of those things when listen, you, it's one of those things where you think about it at the time, but you can't get in because I didn't want to cut anybody off. So I was just waiting for my opportunity to try to work that back into the conversation. Like after you said, for those of you who may not know, we haven't talked about it. This is my brother, Drew. And I'm like, oh, this is a great time to talk about Drew's sagging face. <laughs> you know? um, but uh, it's, 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 like, it's like Rocky at the end of Rocky 2, but in real life. Um, I hate you. <laughs> so, but, but Dave, no. the, the real question yeah, here is, did you find question. yourself kind of getting the, the hang of it? It, it the, the the thing about the game that I thought was really interesting was that it really incorporates so many different elements from a lot of different types of video games, um, and the controls, like you guys said, was it was definitely it took some time to kind of pick up, but like I also thought about like, a little bit like almost like when you're playing Mortal Kombat, and it's almost like trying to retrain my brain a little bit that okay this isn't a left kick r- left kick right kick special move uppercut combo but you're kind of starting to like work similar types of things into getting the character to to do different types of tricks and things like that so um it it did take me a a hot couple of minutes to um you know kind of get the controls down uh and and just kind of put the moves together too because again (coughs) not having a skateboarding background when they're telling you to do like an ollie and telling you to do you know, a number of these other things. I'm, I'm also kind of learning what a lot of the moves are called. Yeah. Mm. You know, you as well. Ollie so, and then grind and, the rails, and there's eight different moves you can do there, and then you got a manual from one rail to the next, and then oh, you hop yeah. up in a half pipe. They're so and, hard, but they're good. It's like, what yeah. What does all this mean, right? Yeah. So, again, coming into this as as kind of a hardcore noob with it, uh, but I, I did start seeing myself kind of get better, but I'm, I'm definitely not at the level of playing the game where you know, as you kind of mentioned, it's it's it is very multi-layered, and you know there are definitely things. And I, as I've been playing it, I've I've kind of gone through the first three levels of, of Tony Hawk One. Um, you know, there's definitely shit that I hadn't been able to get. Oh yeah, uh, just because I can't maintain I can't maintain a grind in the fucking mall level long enough to get <laughs> like you know the the toy <laughs> robot that's hanging there. I can fucking skate through the glass, but I'm not gonna be able to necessarily get some of the other things they're doing, at least not yet. But what was great about it is that you know you want to get better with it. You want to get mm-hmm. a, a better grasp on the controls. And and I thought it was brilliant too. You get like two minutes to play the level. And you know you're not gonna be able to get everything. So you gotta play again. Mm-hmm. And then you gotta play the level again. And, you know, I thought it was interesting with the tutorials, too. And he's like, you know, this is going to be a lot like learning how to skateboard. 
you're not going to be good at this at first. It's going to take a lot of time to get better with this. And you're going to need to practice a lot, but you will get better. And I, I noticed that too, as I kind of played, is that it did get better as, uh, as I kind of went along. But definitely not great, and I'm definitely still fucking up Tony Hawk left and right. <laughs> so, and I think uh, it's a really good point to... Uh, uh, in- you know, the group. Uh, a sign of a really good game, in my opinion, at least, is being able for the player to have a sense of mastery over what they're doing. And like you said, Mac, with like you do, you know, you get a minute and change or two minutes to play a particular level. That's just enough time to get good at one thing, to really get that one combo down. I'm going to try, okay, we're going right back in again. Even the times I've unlocked other levels, I've done enough to, but I'm like, fuck this. I'm going back to that last level. I know I can do it. We're going to keep working on this shit. And then you start, again, that sense of mastery makes you want to try more, play more. And, uh, you know, that's, like I said, that's a great sign of of a good game design. And and I'm sure developers, when they were coming up with it, were like, okay, the player has to feel a sense of mastery. The game has to be easy to pick up, but difficult to master. And it is difficult to master, you know. It, it, that's just i think that's pretty oh, yeah. awesome yeah i think yeah, it's I difficult to intermediate you know what i mean but it's one of those things yeah, too that's fair yeah i i think all of us though i mean except for mac but uh but he's a noob and i love this perspective on it that all of us were frustrated when you start playing the game again you're like shit it's tony hawk i got this right mm-hmm. I, I how many hours did i sit mm-hmm. and how, how much soda did i drink playing this game back when corn was a good idea that's k-o-r-n right uh, but then you get frustrated. Oh, that, that corn, corn, right? Uh, but then, but the, it, but it came back to you, didn't it? Right, like it came to you. Your fingers couldn't work mm-hmm. right, but your your hands were in the right place. Uh, and yeah. I wanted to add on to something you said earlier that that Mrs. Jones, the the wonderful Alley, that is her one gaming franchise. But um, that is her jam. Apparently, it blew my mind. So, it was pretty uh, awesome. So my Drew and myself's sisters are moderate gamers they they like to game the things they do but the one thing you can get my sisters to sit down and play at any time and they're not just gonna play they're a real fucking threat is tony hawk particularly <laughs> tony hawk 2 for the dreamcast like uh, you can put a control in their hand all of a sudden my sisters go from being really sweet to really vicious and very serious in that two minutes and a lot of shit's gonna get said while goldfinger plays and uh and you know there's just nothing you can do about it but it's but that speaks to this game right like how many people did it introduce to it's a financial success so it had to introduce a lot of people to this subject matter well i i, I want to point yeah. out too just how sweet your sisters are to really take care of drew because of his obvious perceived defects um i <laughs> Yeah. It's just, I, just I, I don't see them really having. Aren't you glad you came back? Having... What, what a fuck, Dave? This what? Just, you're just going to the throat. I Where does this come from? I just, this this is because I don't want to cut you off. Like, we we, we haven't seen game. each other. Like, none of us have all been in the same room. Like, all five of us, that is, in quite some time. Uh, a couple of years at least. I, I so believe. Give me that, Dave. I, I, give would me I be as bold to say that last time? Usually this happens during it's Royal World drinking or something. Yeah, you know, that's like, America, it might be. they shit on me. In case you want to that's Peru, it. I am the real baby face. Fuck these guys, okay? In <laughs> Philadelphia, I love you. I don't care what they say. Look, in, in, my, in my first oh, defense, there's you. a lot of rum in this, so... I like it. I did want to. I I did get away with um, doing today's. I'm usually the least sober by telling the wife that uh, that this is, I think, the first time that my entire wedding party has been together. uh, Perhaps since Since the wedding. wedding, Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. So could be. Yeah, that makes me sad. It's been a while. (laughs) Actually, Um, oh yeah, for sure. For sure, but I honestly think Dave's Dave's uh, fervor actually comes from the fact that early into this podcast's run, we we I made the mistake of texting a cool statistic about the podcast in our larger five person group oh, text, man. in which Drew, I guess he was having a bad oh, day man, that day, uh, decided to come fucking Wolverine claws out for, not only for this <laughs> I podcast. Don't remember any yeah, yeah. no. Not only did he this come behind the podcast, but he so, turned, but he yes. turned his 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 rage towards Dave, <laughs> and Dave just 
He gave a little bit back, but he took it in and he fucking bottled it. And now that Dave's several shots of rum deep, it's all coming out. He's calling Drew Quasimodo live for the internet. All right, let's, let's be real, though. Let's be real, though. Every time we're together, oh, if one of us is having a bad day, that person fixates on somebody. And I typically am that person. I, uh, I, I completely forgot. It was forgot. Greg, but... I, I, I did completely America, forget about that. Know. Yeah, I did completely forget about that exchange, but I guess deep down in my fucking soul, you never forget. I never forget. <laughs> you never forget. Ever. And and you Hashtag know, yeah, never forget. you're a vengeful as motherfucker. We were, as we're as we're talking about the Groundhog Day episode, I'm like, yeah, if I had one day to do over and over again, I would just use it for good. And clearly, right now, that's not the fucking case. Because I'm just going to uh, smash <laughs> through this entire fucking episode. <laughs> Well, speaking of, <laughs> let, let's let's get this back on track here. Yeah. Speaking of never yes. forgetting, yeah. so, right? I did not get I did not have to take my turn Please, about my experience exactly. revisiting this game. So uh, I had a similar situation to Jones. Uh, my wife has always been a big gamer. Uh, we have burned so many hours playing Tony Hawk, specifically Tony Hawk Four on the GameCube, which is my favorite Tony Hawk game. Uh, so, but. We're adults now when we have children, which adds a whole nother layer mm -hmm. of interesting dynamic to your family household. So I download the remaster of, of Tony Hawk 1 and 2, and I'm playing, and I'm just shitting the bed, like playing so bad. And my kids are talking shit. Like, they're just like, they're like, they're like, those are some really sick tricks, which, spoiler alert, is what they told me when I tried to skateboard on their little kid skateboard in the on the back porch. And I fucked up my back like last summer. <laughs> uh, so they're like, that's really sick tricks. Is that how you're supposed to play the game, dad? I was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, oh, and, oh and that's Malik, heavy. That's wow. This is like, he used to be really good at this game. Like, I don't know what happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, you know what's, 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 they're just like adding fuel to the fire. But oh, so now know. I'm like, not only do I want to beat the achievements on the level. I got to prove my kids wrong, right? Like, <laughs> like that's what you do as a dad. You got to show them up. So like, yes. so like two days, fast forward right. two days, they come home from school and I'm just hitting all the tricks and they're like, okay, respect, respect. <laughs> now, guys, <laughs> you, you hear those things from your parents, you know, your parents will always say the thing. I hope one day you have children that are just like uh, you. my kids definitely and and they got the full vandergrift like fucking edge <laughs> now and like you know maddie is a preteen so it's yeah. it's coming like full circle and i just think it's great when when those things can happen i would like to share my experience playing tony hawk a second time around granted it was a few days after the first time i played it but <laughs> <laughs> I did find I did find that I struggled just as much as the first day. You know, nothing really got better. Yeah. I still fucking murdered Tony Hawk 14 ways <laughs> Sunday. It it, it, take, it takes it. a lot of time. So in the in the first game there were nine levels, one bonus level. In playing the game back and what you remember of playing through it the first time, what was everybody's favorite and least favorite levels as you played through? Now, if you just started, Dave, you probably are only like three levels deep because it takes a lot. Once, takes a once you get even like 40% of the way, like you need to master like the first three levels at a mastery level before you can unlock like seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten. Right. 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 So like, yeah. Get it, dude. I, Go for it. I was going to say, so like I'd say my first, my favorite level still is the mall. Like I don't know why oh, that, that that level just great choice. It just it just every time I play it, I'm like, oh my god, so much nostalgia the second time around. Now, like playing it the second time around, I don't, I didn't really make it past the mall. Once I unlocked the mall, I was like, yes, go right for it, and just kept playing that and listening to that soundtrack. You know, you talk about corn Noah, like that soundtrack is probably probably like the most memorable oh. soundtrack in my entire. Oh, like, top three video yes. game soundtracks that use real music ever, ever. It, yeah. And just like listening to all of those songs while playing them all over and over again. Um, it just, just brought, that 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 to me is my favorite, for sure, absolutely. Dave, 
Well, so I've heard a lot of great things about the Roswell level. That's uh, the in, last in level. The last level in the you game. got a lot of work to get there, got brother. A lot of work to do to get there. <laughs> but um, you know, I've I'm in the mall level currently, and I'm having some some major trouble uh, in that level for sure. <laughs> um, but um, you know, I liked that. I liked the the level right before that when you're playing in the school, just because. The school. Yeah. You know, the, the first level obviously is the warehouse. <laughs> Not a whole lot to really kind of explore there, but. I really like that, you know, you could go into the basketball court, you could get up on the roof, you know, you're going through the swimming pools. And it just kind of really kind of opened my eyes that this wasn't really the game that I thought it was when I kind of got to that point. Yeah, once you Uh, get past the warehouse and you get to the school, like that's the first like (laughs) open world level that you experience in most games at that time. And there there was a lot in there and and it was really a vast level. There's a lot to there's a lot to do, a lot of stuff to go around. You have alleys to kind of go through. You got to hit all the fucking alarm clock or the, the school bells. I love like that. Doing wall yeah. grinds and everything. Yeah. And I couldn't And you got to figure out there's one on the roof. Yeah. And you got to figure that, out how to get to the roof. And it's not even like the top roof that you can take a ramp to. Like you got to do tricks up the wall to get on the mm-hmm. lower roof to get yeah. the one bell that's on the wall. Yeah. Needless to say, have not quite gotten to that bell yet. Uh, so thank you very much for letting me know where it is. That's going to help a little it's bit. Be- it's to the left before you get tricks. to the pools. Yeah, but um, but I, I've I, I liked I liked the mall epi- I liked the mall stage as well. Um, it's it's much more linear. I like that when you get to the end, it repeats and throws you back to the beginning again, so you can go through and try to find more shit. Um, and I and I, I always thought it's weird too when you go by the like the. The, the the part of the store where they're selling TVs, you heard the emergency broadcast signal when you kind of go by there. And, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously just a couple levels in, but um, I'm I'm enjoying uh, the game. Um, regretting a little bit that I didn't play it when I was younger because I kind of feel like I definitely missed out uh, on that. But again, I didn't have a dream- see, I didn't have a Dreamcast. I didn't have um, I didn't have a PlayStation at that point. So the earliest that I could have got it was on the Nintendo 64, which was a much more stripped down version of the game because they couldn't obviously put everything in the cartridge. But I'm glad that wasn't my experience with it because I'm kind of experiencing what you guys got to experience 20 years ago, just, you know, at this stage. What about you, Noah? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I got to give respect um, that I think the most iconic level from this game is the school. I mean, the school has found its way into every Tony Hawk game since then. Practically everyone, if not everyone. And it's it's the one where if someone's like, uh, God, let's put it on. You're going to think of the school. Probably the map everybody knows the best in any of the games is the school. Uh, my favorite is the mall. Flat out. Uh, it gives me all kind of feelings and uh, breaking the glass and grinding the long pipes through the atrium and stuff. It's just, just so cool to get up there. And it, it felt like once you get there, in the game, you knew what you were doing a little bit more, and now you can get refined. But as much as I love the school, and especially love the mall, I fucking hate downhill jam. Like I, that, I fucking. I am hate glad it. you said that because I was going to say the same thing. Like, there's only a couple levels that are like downhill type levels, and the mall is fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. But downhill jam is like the most frustrating fucking level in any Tony Hawk game. <laughs> oh, it, it's like the developers were like, you know what? I think they're going to like this game too much. Yeah. Let's put that thing in. I fucking hate that oh, level. Shit. Fucking the worst level, wow. dude. I swear to God. And when I, got, when I sat <laughs> oh, down, I was like, I'm so excited. I'm like trying to get Lily to watch it. And Mary, I was like, kind of paying attention. I'm like, oh, this is a shit. And, like, and then I'm like, oh, no. And then like, you start like, oh, yeah. no. I had nauseous. Getting ready to play that game, it was like PTSD. It's so bad. Oh fuck! I got damn. Doc, what do you think? <laughs> well, this is where Doc's like. I actually love Downhill Jam. <laughs> yeah, favorite. Boys. Actually, I did. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I can go fuck yourself with that. Uh, yeah, that was my jam. I, quick, quick but up bumps. Uh, that and uh, Burnside were my two favorites. <laughs> it's, it's so on oh. brand. <laughs> it's like fuck well, you guys and everything. Fuck, you're fuck, it's fuck always you the one thing, thing that I'm not a goddamn hive mind like you, some bitches. No, are, right? I not, like what I like. No. Don't judge me. What what I'll give you is that it is an extremely well designed level, 
but it is so yeah, diff- I like it. it's so difficult because yeah most of the it achievements is. you have to get so high in the level which is such a challenge to get up there it's just frustrating which is why so, i don't like and, it and here's the thing here's the thing and you're right uh and i look it's sort of like a it's interesting how different i am than you guys in this regard because i don't really dig on the open map so much like the school i i've never really liked that map it's interesting wow. that like it's like oh it's this iconic map like i don't like how shit's everywhere it's too it's too open for me yeah. I like every map that I really dig on. This is like from when I was a kid, but the ones that are just straight skate parks, those are the ones I like. You know what no, I'm I saying? Know. Like, like yeah, the Burnside. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I just love just having a space to just do my tricks. I don't have to go fucking up a roof. I don't have to go through a, a basketball court. I don't have to fuck around with any of that. I can just skate, have a good time, and 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 do my thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I Burnside is like my tip favorite though it's between yeah. it's burnside and uh downhill yeah so for me i agree burnside is the best level in the game That's and, great. Yeah, and it's just, i mean the, it's, it's a awesome. mall is a close second but burnside without a doubt is where it's at for me i just don't like downhill cam and it's and, and, and it's and not that i don't you. like it it's just that it's so frustrating that it pisses me off that i don't like it for that reason not that it's not a great level because it is so well, so it does have that thing where it probably has the trickiest extra part to that level, you know what I mean? And once you figure out how to get there, yeah, to get the tape, to get the secret tape, you have to get up and then all the oh, way around. Yeah, dude, the, yeah, and but that's like that's the mastery you were talking about, dog. And I laughed because mm-hmm. the muse review taught me that if one of us feels really strongly about a thing with the exception of nights of scenario like oh i fucking love that song that song was fucking amazing i fucking want to feel that song deep inside of me all the time when i get out of the shower and there it is naked in front of me the other one's like fuck that song no i'd run that car over that song over with my car and then i back up to make sure it was dead like that's how and so when i was i decided to actually be negative for a minute and tell downhill jam that i wouldn't show it my dick even if it asked even if okay. it gave consent and you're like no i want to see it <laughs> so, <I don't> <laughs> let me ask you a question let me ask you a question i'm sorry to everyone you guys can go ahead and walk away for a minute doc so let's be hypothetical you're playing tony hawk you're having a great time you're flipping around Doing your kick flips, you're all these miles. You're doing your spin tricks and you're skateboarding, and the clock is going down. Ten, you're trying to get to the end. Nine, trying to get to the end. Eight, seven, six, five, and all of a sudden stops right in front of you, holding a piping hot, delicious bag of Arby's. Is the fucking Sega channel, and it oh, fucking wants you. Do you, do you do you finish the level and leave? both Sega Channel and that beef and cheddar there? Or do you throw down your skateboard and spend the last five seconds jamming downhill directly in to the Sega Channel? Half, half, and then whole. What do you do? I I think you lost in that beef and cheddar, which is the most overrated thing on the Arby's menu. It's iconic. Jeff, don't get away the joke. Jones, would you fuck the Sega Channel at the end of Downhill Jam? (laughs) If it was holding um, at Arby's, beef and I, cheddar. Wait, th- this my answer is a, it's a two parter here. Uh, <laughs> oh, great. one, what makes you the way you are, and two, no, no. <laughs> you motherfucker, no. <laughs> <sighs> you know, so I'm sure sometimes whenever some, some, says yes. Sometimes when you look at Drew's face, you realize it looks a lot like a beef and cheddar. Just for sauce. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> <Sauce. laughs> oh, Tal his lips. Uh, he, he can't hold it in too much. I am too sober but, um, for this shit. Totally worth is, four for five, right there. Is, is is does does the bag of Arby's have that side of cheese sauce there? Is it like putting Arby sauce all over stuff that Jones has to lick it off? I mean, like, where are we going with he this? He could. But it's up to him. He can have it his way, even though that's Burger King. Oh man. <laughs> But moving on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, please. You know what, Dave? You know what, Dave? What? Fuck you. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> it. He says got him. <laughs> like he got him. With an Arby's roast beef sandwich dripping out. And your best line. You know, you know what? No. Moving on. <clears throat> you well, have fuck a- you too, Noah. Okay. 
I deserve that. Just, just take but a, you know just take a mozzarella deserve? stick and just lift it back up into place. <laughs> um, who's everybody's <laughs> skater that they played as? Who's everybody's skater? I was Kareem Campbell. Every chance I ever get in any of the games is always Kareem Campbell for me. Uh, I First of all, respect skateboard from the hoodie. Right? But to this day, I still get mad if someone else picks Kareem Campbell before I do, if I'm playing multiplayer with him. What about you guys? Yeah, so the... Uh, Kareem Campbell, hard. for sure. He's the only black guy on the roster, so I had to fucking... <laughs> I need some representation for yeah, myself. There you go. So, he, I always chose him. Yeah, and, and so the, the roster was different between the OG and the remaster. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in, in the original... And so when I was playing this back, so I downloaded the remaster on Xbox One, and it's, I mean, it's, it's fucking fantastic. But I, at, at the same time, I was like, let's go back to like the original. So I pulled it up on an emulator, started playing it. I'm like, man, these graphics mm-hmm. are so weak now compared to what I was just playing. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Oh, my yeah. God. Miles yeah. behind. Uh, the Unreal Engine is a hell of a thing. Um, and, and I guess like in the original, they tried to do mocap on Tony Hawk and it just didn't work. Like the technology wasn't there. And while they were trying to, he had a huge influence on the game, not just putting his name on it, but the animations were weak. The tricks were weak. Like he helped them bring that all to where it needed to be. And fun fact, the 900, which is his special move, wasn't actually in the game until two months before the game came out because that was the first time he actually ever hit that trick. Wow. He had been, <laughs> awesome. he had been trying it for years up until that point. And once he hit it, he's like, this has to go in like, no matter what, this has to be in the game. Um, Which is an amazing video, by the way. Yeah. 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 The first time he hits that is, is yeah. spectacular. But so on the new one, I've just been playing as Tony Hawk and just been like maxing out his, his abilities as I've been going through the levels. But, on the original, I always played as Bob Burnquist. Burnquist. He was my go-to. Mm. Drew, um, I was always a custom skater guy because you know, there was I'm not fucking conceited at all. But there was know, no such thing as custom. No, I got to say, the new time, time around, I was not course, I went too, custom I skater. Right. Um, right. Yeah, that was the second one. Like when did they put? It wasn't until later that they even put the creative park in, but. Burnquist was a big one for me. Two. Creative Park was in two. Was that two? Creative Skater was in three. Okay. But if you Bone remember, Parker in the remaster. Yeah, yeah but to, but to, uh, in the original two. The remaster it, though, like I went custom skater. The original, I remember being Burnquist quite a bit. Um, that's I. I don't really remember like anybody other than Tony Hawk or Burnquist were like as I was such like a. Uh, a trendy skateboard fan at the time, so I went with the names that I always saw on TV. <laughs> you just knew. You just went with the names you knew. That's fair. Yeah, I respect right. that. It didn't seem to make much of a difference either way. Like, you know, like, even if you decided to take like a park style skater, like there's so much different styles of skating you needed to do. It didn't really matter where the stats were. Yeah, the, yeah. The only difference is depending on what type of skater you used is where their stat points that you collect in the levels yeah. are based on what their abilities are. That's the only difference. Right. But either yeah. way, like you level it up as you go, even though there was no career mode or anything like that until later Tony Hawk games. Yeah. Dave, who are you playing as? Tony Hawk? Just fucking him up uh, every time? Yeah, Tony Hawk. Oh, just, just, just brutalizing him like you wouldn't believe. Um, you know, uh, Steve uh, Caballero is, is in the... Um, the remaster. So I've kind of messed around with him a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, still kind of obviously in the early phases, I've really been playing a game for like the last week or so. So I haven't really kind of ventured too much in the other skaters just yet. But, you know, you mentioned something, Jeff, that I, that I thought was kind of interesting and I saw something that kind of talked to this as well, but um, the graphics of the game, you know, the motion capture, what the, what the, what they look like. Mm-hmm. I saw something online because, you know, Tom Brady, you know, uh, has retired, is retiring from the NFL. Um, and someone posted something that said, Tom Brady has played in the NFL so long, 
this is what his video game character looked like in his first year of Madden, and this is what it looks like now. Where it's basically like a pixelated face that you can't really discern who the person yeah. is. It's just it's 12 on there. And then you see that it's fucking full Tom Brady with the fucking butthole chin knob and everything else that he has. Cheating piece of shit. Um, but... And you watch your mouth. We'll talk about this another time. But you watch your fucking mouth. Keep going. Tony Hawk. Look, I, I know what my mouth, mouth said, I... Noah, and I'll fucking back it up. But, uh, yeah. but yeah. You got two Brady fans here. Listen, Drew, pick up the fucking way. roast beef hanging off of your mouth and shut it because, you know, we're trying to talk here. All right, yeah. now we're just getting Those are like a fucking <laughs> now we're just getting loser. Mean. No, but uh, I, 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 um, I, yeah, just really Tony Hawk, but I'm just, again, you know, looking at stuff that I did researching this and, and just kind of seeing what the original looked like versus what it does now. Uh, it, it does make such a huge difference in uh, in the graphics. So, yep. What was not- I love you. I love you. Uh, yeah. HDR, native 4K, 60 frames per second, 20 frames per second. It's just, it's a whole other experience. And I, I gotta yeah. say, awesome. and I've been really impressed with everything I saw about the remaster. And the games were great at the time, looking especially. But I think one of the great things, and you guys gotta talk to me about the remaster here, is that not only did they look great. But oh my god, iconic soundtrack, right? Like yeah. fucking all time iconic soundtrack, right? What was your? What is your jam? You had to pick one song from Tony Hawk to jam to. What's your jam? Who wants to lead us off? Uh, so I guess I will. Um, I I would say um, Superman. Yep, is Goldfinger. The name of the song? Yep. Yes, Goldfinger. Is it by, is by Goldfinger? Yeah. Uh, and, and 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 just as a quick aside, like. It's really cool for me, again, where I grew up, there were no sky at all. Uh, there was no state parks. There was none, none of that shit. Um, we had a, a lot we played games in, like, you know, we pick up games. We did. Um, and, and so the music that was on this game, I, I didn't, it's just as beyond me. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't grow up with listening to any of that type of music. So Tony Hawk is also important to me because it was just a, a, what, another little medium, another little property that kind of introduced me to different types of genres of music uh, that was just eye-opening for me that music like that existed. Um, so uh, that was pretty cool uh, on that level. So yeah, definitely um, Superman. Mac Attack. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and go with uh, Superman as well. I found it interesting because I did kind of look at this because I, I, I understand that too, part of the the big legacy of this game is the soundtrack. And, and, you know, I don't know that there ever was anything before that had such a, a vast array of music that complemented the game. And it really complements the culture, the, the skateboarding culture, you know? And, you know, you said Jones, and I, I think it's interesting that, you know, like you said, there weren't any skate parks. And, and even, you know, where, where I grew up, we have some skate parks now, but those didn't come until really after this game, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but going back to the soundtrack, you know, I, I heard Primus as I was playing it, which which kind of really um, kicked that up for me because, you know, even though I wasn't a part of that culture, uh, I did have some family members that were big time skate skaters and were very good. And, uh, you know, a lot of the music that I heard was a lot of the music that they would listen to. And it kind of really took me back. Um, and the remaster edition, they did add some. Like your your favorite, Noah, Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, he's, he's popping up in there. <laughs> um, I, I was always a big yep. Power Man 5000 fan, so I like when Power Man 5000 kind of popped up. But Yeah, and then the remaster, so... Power Man 5000 mm-hmm. and Rage Against the Machine; those were both originally from Tony Hawk 2. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that's what I that's what I noticed right away was um, I, it, it kind of muddied up like my memory of what the original soundtrack was, just because like I knew that yeah, they, they were, shuffled it all. Yeah, they shuffled yeah. it all in there. So I mean, I probably would say Superman just because that's the one that I know was on the first. Soundtrack that sticks out. What, what, which Primus song was it? Was that Jerry was a race car driver? I mean, Jerry yeah. was a race car driver. Yeah, yeah that's a great song. It is. Wasn't there a Chili Pepper song on the original? Or was that a that later was later. one? No, you, it's, okay. it's it's funny. I think it's the Essies, which was the very um, which was the gap between if you liked the Chili Pepper, Chili Peppers, but you weren't quite into Anthrax yet. 
That's the band. So it was Anthrax yeah. is all in the second soundtrack as well. I got to go Goldfinger um, uh, as well because it's just iconic for that mm. game. Um, mm. can't, can't deny it whatsoever. But I, want, I do want to give a, a one up to Primus. So everybody's first exposure to Primus was either this game or the end of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey because they're the band that plays before the Wild Stallions in the Battle of the Bands. Um, so that's a nice little Easter egg. It's either that one of the two. But what? A, oh my God! I can't believe it's got to be far. Finger, Superman. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, you know, if you look at the, the soundtrack for this game and all the Tony Hawk games, it was really revolutionary for the time mm-hmm. because prior to this point, they weren't playing actual like label music in a game, and because they're like, okay, skateboarding is like this alternative culture. Like, let's pull in all these like ska punk bands and give them a platform. So there was Primus and Dead Kennedys and Goldfinger. And I don't know if you guys saw, but uh, last year Goldfinger put out a quarantine version of mm-hmm. Superman where they all played from their houses. It was fucking it is awesome. So fucking good. 20 yeah, like years it, later. Like they're all socially distanced. Jamming. Yeah. And and it, the energy that's there, like they're playing in the room together, it's so fucking good. Yeah. yeah, but but every Tony Hawk game like did the same thing, with the exception, I think it was that maybe put Green Day on there. Dave, your favorite band. <laughs> that's that's when they started uh, to lose people. Uh, but Tony Hawk Four was the first game I ever heard NWA in a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like with express yourself, and I'm like, this is fucking awesome because that's what I listen to, anyways. <laughs> you know, and to hear it in a fucking video game, like even though it's a censored version, like it's still fucking cool. Um, but yeah, I think you know it. It brought light to skateboarding as a culture. It brought light to that side of music for a lot of people who don't necessarily listen to punk music. Um, and and as the games went on. I mean, they brought in songs from the Ramones and a bunch of other bands. And it, it was just, it's, it's a, such a cool thing because it's not, you know, typically when you think about video games, you think about just video game soundtracks, like games that are made for music. Like everybody knows the fucking Mario theme and the Zelda theme and the perfect dark thing. But it's like, let's put real bands. And on what was cool about the original was like in the skate park level, like when you're playing on PlayStation One, you know the the screens that's on that are on the back wall behind the pool, that on the yeah. on the remaster it shows it's basically a camera view of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. On the originals, it was like shitty, like 360 uh, frame wide, shitty MOV versions of the actual music videos of the bands that were playing, which is fucking yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Like no other game was doing that. Yeah, it's no nice other touch. game was doing yeah. that at the time. And if I like, if, and one thing, if I remember correctly, like even like playing it back then, it always told you what the song was. It was like not just like promoting the game; it was promoting the music as well. Like every time you play, oh, what, yeah. yeah, you got um, Fye mm-hmm. plug Fye, and uh, for whatever one is out there still in the country. Fye, but like, yeah, I didn't. I'm gonna get that joke. <laughs> I went, I went straight to Napster and downloaded that shit on computer for free. I don't care if it was illegal or not. No, and this goes to another thing, too. The games came in a CD case because they were CD-based games, and you opened your book, and there was the list of the songs. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. You know, and you can be like, oh, that one. That I one mean, right before, this yeah. game, before this game, my soundtrack, in my memory, was always Toe Jam and Roll, um, which, by the way, we should probably do an episode on that. <laughs> saying Classic. Is that a fucking killer? I love that. Just on that soundtrack alone. But... Yeah, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> Fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> God damn it. I'm just yeah, happy it wasn't me this time. Uh, you know, look, looking again over the soundtrack and everything, um, it was funny. I was playing it. Uh, Papa Roach is on. And, you know, Stephanie comes in and, and she doesn't realize that this was Tony Hawk from like 1999 and everything. And she's like, wait, Papa Roach is still a thing? I'm like, no, this was before Papa Roach was a thing, you know? Um, and, and looking through, you know, there, there are a number of bands on here that, you know, you know a little bit more of now, like the Ataris, MXPX, um, Real Big Fish, um, not songs of 
it, yeah, it, it helped. It helped to put a lot of bands over. Elevate <clears throat> dead for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I think so, the- I don't. Go ahead. No. I was I was just gonna say like there's there's been nine games, and I don't know how many games everyone has played, but aside from this first one, what would everyone say is your favorite Tony Hawk game? Number two. I think mean, Tony Hawk 2 is my all-time favorite of the series, just because I, I, it's the only one of the series that I've owned on two different platforms. Um, the creative skate park was super cool, even though the creating your own park ate up your memory unit like nobody's business. Like so many blocks on the memory card for either the Dreamcast or the 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 PlayStation. Like just so mm-hmm. many, you're like, oh, I guess I don't need my my four-year-old saver Tomb Raider anymore because I want to put some extra ramps on this shit. Um, <laughs> But I, I still think there's a lot of the soundtrack stuff that you, we mentioned because you guys played the one and two remaster, where I guess they mix them together. A lot of that stuff, like Rage Against Machine, it, Papa Roach, is from number yep. two, which I think is a better game. It's not as important as the first one is, but it's a better game. And that's the game to this day that if my sisters come over and I'm like, hey, do you need, do you want a cup of coffee? Hey, do you want a Coke? Hey, do you want to go play Tony Hawk and get beat? And then it gets real, real for a minute. It's Tony Hawk 2 <laughs> is the game. So. So I would easily say that that Tony Hawk Two is my favorite of the series. Yeah, no, I, I would Mac, agree with that as Mac, well. Tony Hawk Two, is hands down. Well, since I've been on since, Dreamcast. since I haven't mm-hmm. really since I haven't really played the games as much, and I've never really gotten into the franchise, I'll talk just briefly about the one that I've heard the most about. And that's Underground, right? You know, I think that. Um, you know, obviously two has to be better than one, you know, or else why are you producing two or the franchise wouldn't keep going if two, it would have stopped two if it would have stopped the two. Um, and I, and I think as I was kind of reading about this, you know, the licensing agreement with Tony Hawk, which, which he was very smart to do, um, was that they just wanted to license his image and his name and just pay him flat out. And he said, no, fuck that. I want to get paid a royalty for every game that gets sold. Yeah. And because of how hugely popular these games were, uh, that that really really worked out well for him. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and just kind of throw out as somebody who, again, is a noob and doesn't know a lot about it, I'll just go ahead and say for shits and gigs, Tony Hawk Underground. That's respectable. <laughs> yeah, and I thought the graphical leap between uh, three and four was huge. It can't be understated. Yep. As well, how important it is. True. Favorite one. Well, well, if I remember correctly, wasn't four like the one where they went fully like open world with it? Open world. Yeah. Um, I remember being like most amazed by that game. You know, because I remember graphically at the time, especially just looking great. Um, but I also remember too just having that graphical improvement over the first one, even, which is really why it stood out to me. But going back and playing the remaster. I think I'm going to go with the first Tony Hawk. It's good. Um, just like after getting the new experience of it again, where my biggest issue with the game was graphics um, in comparison now. And now I'm playing it with graphics and how smooth it is to play a modern game. Um, I got to go back to the first one, you know, because it took me right back in. As soon as I started playing it, I'm messaging my brother going, you motherfucker, look what you made me do. <laughs> he did. <laughs> it's great. Matt, uh, Jafar. Yeah, so for me, it, it's a toss-up between Tony Hawk 4 and Tony Hawk Underground for two oh. different reasons. One, uh, because 4 was not only the first one that went fully open world, but because that was the first one where they like tried to refine what career mode actually is. Not just building up achievements, but starting with a custom skater and like working through to become a pro skater, which was mm-hmm. super cool. Super cool. Um, but in Underground they elevated that like to the next level where it's like, okay, this is, this is what a career mode should look like in a skateboarding game. And it's not like, okay, here's your mission sheet, like follow everything to the T it's like, you're going to skate around in this open world and you're either going to talk to random strangers who are going to give you challenges, or you're going to talk to other pro skaters who are going to give you challenges to help you work your way up through that which I thought was super dope. And I mean, Mm -hmm. granted, I've spent so many hours of my life playing the early Tony Hawk games. And like, you could see like early on. So like from one to two, like the the graphics didn't change all that much, but the gameplay got better. And then 
number three was basically a direct rehash of number two. And Activate, yep. Activision has this habit of we're just going to cycle games every year. We're just going to put a new one out. Like EA's doing it with Madden, so why can't we do it with Tony Hawk? We saw how successful They've it been was doing it. for one and two, which is why they did it nine times. And then everyone's like, okay, fuck you, Tony Hawk. <laughs> 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 but like th- those two in particular, four and five, Tony Hawk Underground was number five. Like they tried to do something new because with three, they lost a bunch of fans. And so they try to reinvent themselves and it got better. And then after Tony Hawk Underground, like the last four games were just shit after that. It just and died. It, like, yeah, active. it continued to go down. And then they're like, OK, yeah, we're not going to do anything like this anymore. And then they're like, oh, shit, it's been 20 years. Let's do a remaster. No, I'm with you on that one. So so I guess we're talking about 20 years after the first one we got remasters out so quickly let's end it out on this note gentlemen let's go around the horn and let's say what's the legacy of the tony hawk series at the time here we are now old men talking about video games and you know what i'll eat it off for once i think the legacy is it introduced not only to an entire generation of skateboarding games but <laughs> tony hawk is one of the very first games i can think of that was when you say the sentence that game is fucking way better than it should have been way better than it should have been for what it was is a chance to capitalize on a culture to sell a couple of cds and it fucking turned into a major gaming franchise that we still talk about even if they hadn't remastered it we'd still be talking about it today yep. right so i think that that oh, yeah. to me that's like it's, it's, uh in a nutshell tony hawk who saw fucking. that coming right uh so you, doc what's your lasting uh, uh lasting uh, legacy of tony hawk yeah what you said, and I'm going to add on top of it, right? Like, you think about, for me, uh, you think about Tony Hawk, when I think about Tony Hawk, rather, I think it's a steam, right? It's a trend set that are follow. Uh, fantastic. It's just a perfect combination of gameplay, replayability, uh, mastery, uh, a cultural significance. You know, like I said, for a lot of people, never heard music like that before. You know, skating was not a part of their their world, uh, and, and it introduced a whole like said, a whole generation of people to that world. And I think that it, how, the question is, how many skaters did that franchise create? That's what I'm curious about. I would love to know somehow that possible number but i bet it's a big number yeah that's legacy yeah, yeah. I, it has to be that's a really good question i'd like to know how many vi- wrestlers the really the boom of wrestling video games in the late 90s into the early 2000s cost and how many skateboarders tony hawk pro skater cost Matt. nintendo nintendo 64 oh. no mercy no mercy which we will fucking do one day one of the greatest wrestling games one day ever. we'll cover the day oh uh. Let me just before before we get on to this, I just want to say this about No Mercy. I have this fantasy, and I actually tried it once, and we, we got turned down for it. Uh, at the uh, Pittsburgh Comic Con, they were looking for panelists uh, to fill in the lineup, and, I, and our show hadn't really been more than a few episodes. And I talked to the guy, and he's like, you're going to have to come back to me when you guys have a whole thing. I have a fantasy of doing a live show. If and, we do pull that off... You better believe the fucking thing we're going to... It was at the Retro Gaming Convention. And the thing we're going to do is fucking No Mercy. Is going to be that. That's our live show. Is fucking have it hooked up behind us with a bunch of barbarians playing it. And fucking talk about it. <laughs> live in front of people. But Matt, the legacy of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yeah, you know, um, I've I've always... I, it's never been like a fantasy to me. I've always expected that this podcast would grow to the point that we'll be doing a live show in front of a mass audience. So that's just that's just where my mind goes with this. Um, my my thing about Tony Hawk is that y- you take something that is actually very hard to do and exceedingly hard to be good at skateboarding, right? Mm-hmm. So again, just kind of going off my experiences, um, being a rollerblader, playing roller hockey, skating my whole life, doing crazy shit off stairs on rollerblades and things like that that other people do on skateboards, and I was able to do that. Because I spent a whole lot of my fucking life learning how to skate. Hmm. But I never did that with a skateboard. Because it's really fucking hard to do. You can fuck yourself up real good doing it. But let's go ahead and take something that everybody's tried. Everybody's gotten on a skateboard at some point in their life, right? Mm -hmm. And now let's go ahead and give you the controls to be as good at it as you want to be. 
without actually having to put yourself through what it takes to be as good at it as you want to be. And I think that's a, an appeal that the game really used to kind of take off. Um, for, for those of us at home right now, uh, Jeff has uh, held up a sign that has distracted Mac. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, yeah. I, I, um, yes. Yes, but... But that's you, not that's you, a good you, point, you can't do a triple axle and a double toe loop, Jeff. So go fuck yourself. Uh, uh, <laughs> but speaking of people who fuck themselves, yeah. But yeah, it's it's just it's just the appeal of being able to do something. And I, I think there's another game that I would love for us to talk about a little bit down the road here too. That I think capitalizes on a game like Rock Band or Guitar Hero, oh, where you know that'd be, that'd be fun. there are people there are people like yourself, no, who and Drew that you guys have put in the time in to really learn how to play a musical instrument and be very good at it. And then there are other people who, with five buttons, could feel like they're really fucking good at it. And that's the same thing with Tony Hawk. Um, we crushed so many hours playing rock band. Let me clarify that I've been playing music for about 20 years, and I still play Guitar Hero just to feel like I'm really fucking good at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a hell of a thing, Yeah, if you think about it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but the, the ex- I can't wait to cover that subject so Noah can just be really arrogant the entire time. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> he sucked at the game and <laughs> be so judgmental. I, know. I can't wait. Yeah, I, for, it's gonna for, be amazing. For, for me, the, for me, the legacy is the accessibility, it's giving people the ability to do something in a way that they couldn't do it normally, but could feel like they could. And I think that you know that uh, that definitely played on the other games too. Well, that's that's actually a really really good point. And if we ever do rock band, I am going to buy monocle. Just to be the fucking review of the monocle in there. Uh, but I, I I didn't want to insinuate, Dave, that you fuck yourself because I was trying to use it as a segue to Drew. Uh, listen, listen <laughs> it's a great segue. Great anytime, segue. Anytime, at real quick. Anytime I fuck myself, it's sex with someone I love, so it's okay. It's beautiful, it's fair, smart. Nobody, smart. Nope, so- nobody loves me like me. I just have to point out that you're absolutely wrong, Dave. Uh, you already have a massive audience that you perform to on a weekly basis. Okay, you have the entire world. That's Peru and all your friends down under that you just did a lot of like disservice to by just putting them down like that, saying they're not a massive audience that even matters. You're such a dickhead. I just wanted to point that out and make you look like a terrible person. But the legacy that Tony Hawk has left behind... Um, I think it's that just crossover between cultures, just like Dave said, the accessibility. Ironically, it probably created as many skaters as the Madden franchise took away from like potential football players. But like, <laughs> I like that. If you were, if you were to really compare the two, but it did that, the accessibility is definitely the, the legacy, and like really like people being okay with already like pop music. You know, to some extent, you know what I mean? And hearing songs that they were hearing all the time. And it, it, it created a platform for the music industry to even just like, now we can have another avenue to make money off of, you know? And yeah, for sure. Good stuff. Jafar. If, 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 I, if I may, real quick, okay. the money that I will lose from endorsements and advertising from our great friends in Australia, I'm more going to make up from sponsorship from Arby's. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there's there is nothing in my life that Not I have been you. waiting for to the day that Arby's calls me and said, "So we've been listening to your podcast." Which, by the way, I one time I'll set I'll post a screenshot on our social media. I was eating a sandwich and I texted a picture of myself eating the sandwich to Arby's and I said, "You're inside me right now," and they sent me a smiley face act because <laughs> Arby's fucking gets it right. Uh, on. One day they're gonna like we want you to say that you have the meats and. And I'm be like, put me in, coach. This is the day I've been waiting for. Uh, but you're far. And if they have if the worst that happens to me is a picture of me next to a roast beef fucking sandwich, I'm okay with that. Dream big, dude. Dream big. <laughs> Jafar. Someday. When I grow up, I want to be Jafar, a real boy. What's the legacy like of the you, fucking Drew? video game? Uh. Before anyone else fucking interrupts it, Jafar, what's the legacy? Yes. I, think, yeah, I, think, I think this game and this franchise has a uh, lasting impact not only on gaming but on skateboarding as a culture skateboarding is a fucking olympic sport now i don't think if if this franchise didn't come along that that would have happened potentially that's a bold but true statement um you know and it it opens the door for a lot of 
a skaters who weren't gamers and gamers who weren't skaters to sort of cross that bridge. And that's a pretty fucking big deal. And if you look at, you know, PlayStation one, I think Tony Hawk three was the last game that came out on the PlayStation one first gen, but it was also the first online multiplayer game on the PlayStation one. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's a lot of things that were happening and a lot of seeds that were planted along the way. And, and, I think you can't talk about sporting games on any platform without mentioning Tony Hawk in the conversation. I mean, it's not a fucking Madden. It's not an NHL 94, but it has a place at the table, which I think is important. Man, who thought skateboarding game and the place as the, one of the easily top three, uh, top four, at least tops sports games of all time. So, well, you know, I think, I think too, just kind of piggybacking off what you, what you said there, Jeff. Um, I'm looking for my note here with it real quick. Uh, Tony Hawk Two, I believe, was a finalist for you know best console game, best sports game, like losing out to fucking Legend of Zelda: Jorah's Mask. You know, like I mean, this this Being it's it's candidate. you don't want to undersell how actually major this game was and. You know, as, as, as those of us that worked at the toy store, well, a lot of us worked in electronics, we sold so many fucking copies of this game to, Dude, to, every, to everybody. It crossed, yep. it crossed who you were to be able to play that game. It's one of those things. Let me just put it this way. Uh, Tony Hawk got itself a midnight release on more than one occasion. Let's tell you how big a game it was, right? So, and I don't even know if game French, because you have downloads, so why wouldn't you just pre-download the game and play it the minute it becomes unlocked? Like, all of us right. did Halo Infinite, right? But why, but, like, to, to line up for a, outside of a video game store for hours to get let in at midnight to play a Tony Hawk game, that's huge. You've, you've made it. It's a mm-hmm. top echelon. Game. Even though our podcast is not top echelon, we're still bringing our game. And we're going to keep bringing it with you guys because next week we're talking about Saturday morning. No, excuse me. That was last week. Jesus, I can't even remember who we are now. This is it. Who fucking cares what's next? Coming up next. Who cares? I'm going to come. <laughs> next oh. week. Ne- I know what's coming oh. up. Next. next week is music. And we're going to talk yes. about the debut album from the Killers, Las Vegas oh, Band, goodness. the album Hot Fuss. It's going to be interesting. That's it. Fucking right. Hot Fuss. Drew's it. not allowed on that record, and I'll tell you why. Not because Drew hasn't been very good, and I've actually been very impressed here today, Drew, but because I don't want the two of you're you... You're only saying that because you're related and you don't want to make it no, awkward no, 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 family no. dinner on Sunday. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, trust no, me, if there's anybody most honest that. about me, is that... <laughs> No, no, but also because I think what I'd like to do now, tell me if the other not not Mac, because I'm not going to get his name because he's part of this experiment. I'd like to have Mac and Drew on this podcast together uh, in a episode we're going to entitle Mac versus Drew. OK, <laughs> but we're not but we're not going to tell them what they're talking about until they show up for the episode. And then we're just going <laughs> to let them go. Show up. Oh, boy. And the that three of awesome. us are just here. Like celebrity judges at a boxing yeah. match, just to try to make sure this thing stays short, on, just so we don't go over on time. You know, I think. I, I, think I, I, Drew, yeah, I don't know if you want me talking about that fucking album. Drew, I, I, I really hope that it's like a surprise limp sync battle, and we have to do a whole fucking performance. It'll be great. That'd be great. Yeah, it'd be great. And <laughs> not, not great podcasting material. <laughs> really great for whatever clips we put on YouTube. <laughs> Listen, People are just listening to Britney else. Spears. They have no idea what's going on. The whole backbone of this podcast is things that shouldn't make for good audio material, but God damn it, we like doing it anyway, right? I mean, I broke up with The Matrix. It took five minutes, which doesn't seem very long, but it felt like a lifetime while we were listening back to it. So, but we got a lot going on. Yeah, but... hey, you gonna say something else, Drew? Because you yeah, interrupt gonna one say, more person the last time before <laughs> fucking go. I do. For it. I do. I, you have a weird obsession with Herb Jones. Fucking fucking Sega Channel. Man. Way to call that one out, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, I do. Why? Listen, listen it's, it's called, weird. First off, really Drew, weird. Drew, it's, Drew, it's called it a fetish. All right. First off, that's what it's, it's called. A it's a kink. You know, I'm pretty sure there's 15 websites that you could probably pull up right now about people going through erotica with you know video game hardware. 
Um, and I don't think you should be judgmental of your brother. In fact, I think you need to support him in his endeavors as the uh, you know sibling that you are. Fuck face. Let me just, let me let me just be real with you for a second. Uh, you talking about what's our all? I'm gonna put it right out there now. What's my end game? What's my all time achievable thing for this podcast? And I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's not a live show because I I fuck I could focus <laughs> in a place now to do it. It's not it's not getting paid to do the show because that would be cool. But one day I want to go on to Rule Thirty Four, and I want to put Herb Jones and Sega Channel in, and there's fucking fan art. That's what I want. That's my end game. Vicious, awful uh, fan art of Herb Jones and R- Sega Channel on Rule Thirty Four. That's my end game. Could, That's I, guys... and when that happens, I want to be buried with a beautiful, like lithograph print, like Jeff used to have of the Disney stuff in his apartment, like across my chest, so that when people come to the open casket to pay my respect, like he was so oh, and they back away because it's fucking nasty, like. God. Oh, that's fine. That's so, so unsettling, and I appreciate your your willingness to commit to this. His commitment to it all is the most beautiful thing ever. It <laughs> is. It's totally there, fucked up, but it's beautiful <laughs> at the same time. There, there is a guys. There is a world where you know, and we saw this at the. I saw this at the hockey game I went to recently. They had a, they had a guy there who's an artist, and he was doing a live painting just right there in mm. front of everybody, and uses his hands to kind of do the whole thing. There's a world where I'm walking down the fucking street in June at the Pittsburgh Arts Festival, and there's a guy doing a live fucking painting right there of Herb Jones just looking right into the fucking eyes of the Sega Channel. Arby's fucking horsey sauce just kind of dripping down a little bit. <laughs> at least we think it's horsey sauce. We don't know how far this has gone so far. <laughs> but and, and we're just all going to just kind of stand there and realize we made it. That's, That's it. What I'm That's, saying. It. That's just where it is right there. <laughs> fucking perfect. And you, our dear, sweet, singular Peruvian listener, are fucking perfect. Uh, gentlemen, uh, one word, last word, any word. Doesn't even have to be about Teddy Soft. Just say a word. Drew, you lead us off. One word. Go. Dave. <laughs> Mac, one word. Go. Arby's. <laughs> Stock, one word. Go. Good night. Jafar, one word. Go. What? Ejaculate. (laughs) Nothing good. Hey guys, thanks for listening. And if you liked what you heard, please be sure to tell a friend or two to check us out. You can follow this podcast on Apple, Spotify, and much more to make sure you get the latest episodes and all of our cheeky, cheeky shenanigans. And don't forget to check us out on social media. We have our Nothing Good page on Facebook. We're on Twitter at Nothing Good Pod and at Insta at Nothing Good Podcast. And while you're there, drop us a line. Say hello. Enjoy some of our shit posting and shameless promotion, or hell, even check out our merchandise. I promise it's really sweet. We'll see you next time. <laughs>